Hi, it's Maura Gamble from Mount Permaculture Life and the Permaculture Education Institute. And I'm out here in the woodlands behind Schumacher College at the moment with Stefan Harding. Um, I met Stefan about, what, 27 years ago? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and you... How would you describe yourself? You're the, the head ecologist, the leader mm. of the Master of, Master of Holistic Science. Yeah, and all. yeah. What else? Well, I'm a resident ecologist. Yep. As you said, in charge of the MSc in Holistic mm -hmm. Science. And I, I've been here from the very beginning of the college, yeah. so I'm one of the founders of the college. Yep. And my background is in science and ecology. Yep. Mm -hmm. Should we walk back down this way? And we, sure. I, a lot of the people who come and do the permaculture courses with me um, mm -hmm. are fascinated about Gaia. Mm -hmm. And I thought it'd be a really good person, you, mm. be a perfect <laughs> person to ask because yes. that is that has been your focus for a long time. Mm. And particularly because you, you spent a lot of time with James Lovelock I as did. well, didn't you? I did. Very lucky to spend time with him. So, a, so what yes. is Gaia? Hang on, I just noticed there's a... There's oh yeah, a, we'll go this way. All right, we'll go this so way. Gaia has got various levels. So there's, there's the, the mythological depth psychology level to Gaia. Mm -hmm. And then there's the scientific level of Gaia. So yep. we can talk about both of those if you like. Sure, let's... On, let's... on the scientific level, Gaia um, is about all the feedback relationships between all the organisms on the planet, so the microbes, the fungi, uh, the animals, the plants, etc., mm -hmm. between themselves and with the rocks, the atmosphere and the water. And the mm -hmm. idea in Gaia is that they, they all interact with each other. Yep through feedbacks, and what emerges from all those interactions, it's something completely unexpected. Mm. And that is the ability of the planet as one great whole to regulate its surface conditions, such mm -hmm. as the temperature. So the idea is that Gaia is, a, for me anyway, a great living planetary organism, mm. constituted by all the relationships between all the living organisms on the one hand, and the atmosphere, rocks and water on the other. So it's like a sort of tight feedback. So the difference between Gaia and say science that's taught in schools is that it's about the interconnectedness between all parts, isn't it? That yeah. it's not just the rocks or it's not just the plants yeah. or it's not just exactly. the climate. It's how all of those yeah. interconnect. Yeah, and Lovelock's this is Lovelock's Gaia theory. It mm. has revolutionized our understanding of the earth. Mm. So before Lovelock, the idea was that the earth was just a hunk of rock floating around in space with a little thin smear of life on the surface. Mm which had no influence on the surface temperature or other factors of the surface at all. Yep, which... Life was just like a passive passenger. Yeah. That's, what, that's what people thought. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But after Lovelock, that's completely been thrown out. And so Lovelock had a pretty interesting background too. He was oh, yeah. quite a... Can you tell us a little bit well, about Well, he's an him? absolute genius. Mm. Um, mm. And he's a brilliant in, in, inventor of scientific instruments. He's yes. got a great knowledge of science uh, across all, all kinds of science. Mm -hmm. And he's, but the main thing about him is that he is phenomenally original and creative. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and very brave, because when he came up with the idea of Gaia, I mean, even just to call it Gaia. Yeah, that's right, I know. Is that's, incredibly brave. As a scientist, too. Yeah, because to... he was jokingly thinking of calling his theory the bio cybernetic universal system <laughs> tendency. Oh, that would have done really well, wouldn't <laughs> yeah, it? It would have. <laughs> the bust hypothesis. Oh, oh, I see, I didn't even get that. Sorry, I'm, I missed that one. <laughs> that was the idea, it was a joke. A joke, but anyway, that would have gone down very well with the scientists. Bio cybernetic, yeah, yeah. cybernetics is the science of feedback and control. Yep. Universal system tendency, pretty good. Yeah, yeah. But he didn't like it, and he thought, no, that's not right. I've got, I need a really good name. Yep. And his friend, the novelist William Golding, yep. told him to call it Gaia. Mm. And he, Lovelock never heard of Gaia. No, right. Now this brings us to the mythological dimension. Mm -hmm. Now Gaia is the ancient Greek divinity of the earth. Mm. Now, she's, she's even more primordial than a goddess. Because mm. in the ancient myth from Hesiod, which Hesiod wrote down about 600 BC, there was, first of all, before anything existed, there was this chaos, vast and dark. Mm. And out of this chaos, well, sorry, this chaos wanted to become something. It felt a bit lonely. Mm. So it formed itself into the earth. And that was the first thing that came out of primordial chaos, was mm. Gaia, fully formed. Oh, wow. Yeah, and so... I don't think I've heard this story before. Yeah, you see, it's very deep. Mm. And, and so Golding said to Lovelock, no, you should, you don't call it the biocybernetic universal system tendency. <laughs> call it Gaia. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. This huge sacred name mm. came out of Golding's mouth. And wow. Lovelock, to his, to his credit, eventually understood it. Yep. To begin with, Lovelock thought Golding had said Jaya. Oh, you know, right. this big swirling yeah, edit. Yep. And so Lovelock said, no, not Jaya. Can't call it Jaya theory. 
And I like to think in my crazy poetic yes. way that the whole biosphere that had been waited for, waiting for 2,000 years yeah. for Gaia to come back into the Western culture yeah, gave yeah. up and thought, oh, God. <laughs> but Golding said, no, not Gaia, Gaia. Boom. And so the whole thing started again. And this time Lovelock heard it. Yeah, right. And he, to his credit, mm. he, he, he really liked the name. It resonated with yeah, him. Yeah, yeah. I mean, for a scientist That's to adopt true. such a deeply mythological, poetic yeah. name for his theory, it's phenomenal. It is, isn't it? Yeah. So, so we, we got Gaia back into our culture through, through science. And so what? So how did people respond to it in those early days? Well, the New Age and the hippies loved it, of course. Yeah. And that was right. But the scientists hated it. Mm. Because Gaia, for them, suggested that something about the Earth was sort of knew what the temperature should be, or it uh. knew what, what the amount of phosphorus yeah. should be. In other words, it was what we call in science a teleology, a teleological. Mm implying that there's purpose in nature. Yeah, right. And that is not allowed in mm, science. No. Big taboo. Yep. I mean, I was brought up in science. The last thing you're allowed to say is that there is purpose. Mm. It's all meaningless, mm. purposeful, purposeless. Mm. It's one great dead machine. The whole yep. cosmos is one great dead machine. To be observed and, yep. yeah. And, and to be manipulated yep. and used yep. for our purposes. Mm. So, mm. Gaia smacked of teleology, mm. of purposefulness in nature. Mm. So they hated it. Hmm. And they gave it a really bad time. Um, and so how, and did he, how did he manage to get it heard? Well, he's science? only got it heard a certain amount. Hello, this is my dog friend. Hello, hello. <laughs> Excuse me. Hello, George. Hello, George. It's all right. So, um, well, what he did was to make a mathematical model. He knew he had to make a mathematical model to get round okay. this problem. And so he created a model called Daisy World. Oh, Daisy World, right. Which yes. is actually, he describes as his finest invention. Mm. He's created many brilliant scientific instruments. Mm. And so that showed that in principle you could get Gaia and self-regulation emerging mm. from selfish individuals mm -hmm. and selfish organisms that interact with each other, but also affect the climate at the mm. same time. Yeah. And no one had ever made a model that put yeah. physics and biology together. Yeah, right. And it was amazing how right. you get emerging, it's amazing how yep. out of Daisy World, yep. you get uh, self-regulation emerging yep. without building it into the equations. Mm. It just emerges from all the interactions. Yep. And so you worked with him there. Was that part of what I you did. were doing I with worked him? With, I did that for five years. Oh, wow. Until I got really tired of sitting in front of computers. Yeah, right. Uh, <laughs> I can imagine. <laughs> but but, but the Gaia theory has transformed our understanding of the Earth, yeah. and it's become rebranded in science. Yep. Um, so it's now called Earth System Science. Yeah, okay. Earth System Science. So, so what's happening now with climate change, and, and how is Gaia theory informing... What's going on in the present day? Yeah, well now, now the very best climate modellers mm. have been influenced by Lovelock mm. very heavily. Some of them here in Exeter in England. Yeah, right. Tim Lenton and Richard mm -hmm. Betts, Peter Cott, some of the really mm -hmm. top people. Yeah. And they're making new supercomputer models of mm. the climate yep. based on Gaia theory yep. in which the organisms interact mm -hmm. with the climate. Yeah, and right. of course it makes things infinitely more complex. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Um, but that's one thing that's happening. Yep. Um, another thing that's happening on a more theoretical level mm -hmm is that people are beginning to realize that there's a, another level of natural selection, mm. which operates at the level of Gaian feedbacks. Yeah, right. There's selection amongst Gaian feedbacks. Mm -hmm. So I know this sounds a bit technical, but it's actually breaking open our understanding of evolution mm. and how it works. And we're beginning to realize that evolution can also happen at the level of planetary feedbacks. Mm. So I think it's a very exciting time when the paradigm is starting to shift, all because of Lovelock's work. Yeah, and so Lovelock is now 100. turning 100. 100 this year. Wow. When about? July the 23rd, I think. And you're going to his birthday party yeah, here? Yeah, in Blenheim Palace. And he's as sharp as a button. He's wow. written a new book. Oh, has he? Yeah. What's it called? I can't remember uh, now, actually. But uh, oh, it's only gosh. just been... It hasn't been published yet. And so, ha so how does he see what's happened with... with Gaia since it started? Has he I think shifted his perception on anything? Has he had change of thinking about it or has it just kept on evolving? Um, I think he's kept on evolving and I think he's quite happy that it's been more or less accepted in mm. science. At least certain aspects of it yep. have been accepted. Yep. And I think he's very happy that gradually even evolutionary theory is, is realising that there's a Gaian dimension yep. that has been ignored yep. um, in natural selection. And so is Gaia being now taught in schools yet, do you think? Not enough. 
No, no because, you know, no, there's no, no, still too no. much of the old science. Too much of the old science. But you see, for me, Gaia is both mythological and scientific. Mm. What I try to do in my was, work... What was your book? My oh, book's called Animate Earth. Yeah. Animate Earth. So I'm trying to put together the science, but in a way, that, in a poetic way. Mm. So we can use the science to awaken our poetic relationship mm. with nature. Because mm. unless we have a poetic relationship, a love relationship yeah, yeah. with nature, we're not going to do anything about it, about no. the crisis. No, that's our understanding right. will be too theoretical. Yeah. I think we need, I mean, I'm a scientist, so I need the yeah. science. Yeah. But I want to use it to help myself fall in love with nature much more. Well, so that was you my to book fall was in love with nature, but everyone to fall in love with nature. I everyone. think you're absolutely right. Everyone. Until, we ca until we care, yeah. until, we, until we do love, we're not going to... That, no, we? we have to fall in love with nature. Yep. And because we're a scientific culture, mm. I think we can use the science of Gaia particularly, mm. the science of you know microbes, earthworms, mm. fungi, forests, mm. clouds, <laughs> mountains, <laughs> rocks, yeah. all of that as one integrated mm. living being told mythologically mm. with the science. Yep. I think that can help us fall in love yeah, with yeah. nature. And I, I mean, that's what I've been doing at Schumacher yeah, College yeah, yeah. for 27 years. Yeah. And it works. Yeah. I mean, I tell the, the, some of the science as a fairy story. Mm. You know, like love affairs between yeah. carbon princes and calcium princess. And it works, it works. Wow. People, it, it really does I wish work. I could hear that again. I remember hearing that 27 years ago. And I remember you had your, your was that a little guitar, a yes. ukulele or something? Yes, a quattro from Venezuela. That's right. Yeah. And you sung, you sung the guy's story singing, too. Singing, yeah, singing. So it's a mixture of, yeah. my, for me, it's integrating. Yeah. Jung, Carl Jung's four functions, mm. thinking, feeling, sensing, intuition. Mm. Put them all together. Mm -hmm. And then in the middle is Gaia. Mm when we, we integrate our psyches in that way, mm -hmm. then we can really fall in love with this amazing cosmos of yeah, ours, and yeah. then we'll spontaneously act to yeah. save it. Yep. Yeah. I think that's a beautiful thing. <laughs> and you're now writing another book based on that. that I'm writing another book. Yeah. Yes, this time I'm trying to put together alchemy and mm. Gaia. Mm. So I'm calling it Gaia Alchemy. Wow. But it's very difficult. Yes, I can I, I'm imagine. not sure if I'll manage to do it. Oh, well, I hope you do. Yeah. I really hope you do. <laughs> yeah. Now, there was also... Did, there's also a film based on your work There is. Well. It's a film called Animate Earth. Yeah. And yeah. there's an app which you know about, the Deep yeah. Time Walk app. Yeah, yeah. So um, what I might do underneath is put links to all of these Please, could too, you? so people can see. Yeah, that would be, be great. great. Yeah. And of course, Moray, it was so good that you were one of our first students oh, yeah. at the college. Oh, and look what you've done as a result. Oh, it's fantastic. It, it was, it's kind of, let's turn around so we can see, oh, yeah. the, see the college behind us. Here right. we go. There we are. Yeah. It's part of it there. Mm -hmm. Well, it did. It transformed my life. It, the, the thinking... That I, that I, I don't know, the experience, it wasn't just the thinking, it was the whole experience. It was, mm. the, it was a learning community, the way that what mm. we ate and how we shared and the mm. knowledge and mm. the, the people that came here too. Mm -hmm. like it was, there, was, there, was, there was you, there was Fritjof Capra, there was Vandana Shiva and Helen mm. Novohodja, Ani Ness. Mm. I mean, all of those different things together, you know, mm -hmm. pour those in, in this mix of this beautiful learning community into young people and you create... You know, I think incredible opportunities for people to head out into their life and do incredible things. And people who've been here, like you, have gone on to do incredible mm. things, like you've done, all over the planet. Mm. So although it's a small place, yeah. I see it's a centre of deep guy and learning. Yeah, absolutely. It's as if there's something, some deep mm. energy coming out of the earth which mm. inspires us all <laughs> very deeply. And draws us back. Like, I mean, this is, I yeah. don't know how many times I've been back. And <laughs> I wish I'd been back more, but, you right. know, this is, yeah, mm. I, there's a, as I... Came around the corner just a, a week ago, and I and I saw it and I felt it. And I was like, oh, I'm home. Mm. There's a, you know, I, I mm. have there's a few points in around that I feel that deep sense of connection. Mm. And this is definitely one of them. Yeah, you know that saying in Latin, alma mater, mm. the uh, mother of your soul. Mm. This really, for me, is also the mother of my soul. This mm. college, for the reasons you've said, mm. it's mm. an incredibly important Isn't place. It? Yeah. Mm. Thank you so much for uh, a pleasure sharing. Yeah. It's lovely. Thank lovely you. to Thank see you, you again. And you too, Morik. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>